Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. And in this video, we are going to begin your journey towards becoming a speed cuber by learning how to solve the white cross. And welcome to uh, this course on learning how to solve a speed cube, a Rubik's cube. In this series of videos that I will be producing, I will be teaching you one video at a time, one layer at a time, over a number of hours of video, uh, how to solve a Rubik's cube. We are going to start at the very beginning. The uh, expectation being that at this point, you don't know anything about how to solve a Rubik's Cube. And we are going to proceed all the way through until you are an expert, an expert solver. Hooray. Uh, so in this video, we're going to learn how to solve the white cross, which is the foundation of all, well, almost all solving. There is technically a few ways you can solve without doing the white cross, but pretty much everybody who solves starts with the white cross and uh, proceed, build on the knowledge from there. I want to say a couple of things before we get started that are important as you begin this journey. First of all, first of all, it is important that you have confidence in yourself, that you know that you are capable of doing this. You are capable of doing anything that is hard. You just have to not give up. Solving a cube requires practice and it requires patience. And there are going to be moments where you are going to feel a little bit of frustration in your soul. You're going to be like, oh, this is too hard. I can't do this. And that's normal. That's normal to feel that because this is new. Okay, and everybody feels frustration when they're doing something new. And so you have to start with a growth mindset, which just means that you believe that you are capable of getting through the frustration and having a breakthrough and having it all come into focus. It will, as long as you don't give up, that's inevitable. Okay, that's how learning works. You, you can't avoid it. You're, go you're going to, is, if you keep trying, and you just keep pushing and you keep practicing, it is unavoidable. It's going to, at some point, make sense to you. And it's going to all come into focus and you are going to get good at it. Uh, everybody is, that's the way it works. So don't give up. Say to yourself now, I want to become a speed cuber and just keep pushing. The reason I'm doing these is videos, although I do teach a live class as well. And uh, if you would like to sign up for that, you can go to my website, which is right here, handsomescienceteacher.com, and uh, sign up for the live class. But I, the reason I like to do videos like this is because you can pause them, and you can stop, and you can practice, 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 and rewind, and see the things uh, that I show you again and again with close-ups of my hands, my butamous hands. Uh, so yeah, do that. Hooray. So let's go ahead and get into solving the white cross. When I say white cross, what in the heckins am I talking about? So every solve is going to be different because there are lots of different, uh, I forget the exact how you pronounce it. It's 41 gentillion, I think is the number different scrambles, which is Basically enough scrambles that you're really never going to get every scramble. Uh, and in fact, you're probably never going to get the same scramble twice. It's extremely unlikely. So every time you start, you have a different cube. But you can always create, and uh, when you solve, you need to create this white cross on the bottom. 
which looks like this, so, or a plus sign, but we call it the white cross. Okay. So uh, notice that I've got white, a white plus sign, and that the edge pieces match the center pieces, orange and orange, green and green, red and red, blue and blue. So by the end of the video, this is the goal. We want to be able to create the white cross with these edge pieces and center pieces matching. Before we do that, there are some important things you need to know. First of all, let's start with the colors. Okay, you need to know that there are sides to a cube. And I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? But what I really want you to understand is that they don't, the sides are based on the centerpiece and they don't move. So this white centerpiece is always going to be here. See, all the other pieces move around, but the centerpieces don't. They always stay fixed. They are fixed. There's no moving mechanism inside the cube to move centerpieces. Everything else moves around them. So white is always going to be opposite yellow. And you need to keep that in your head and understand that. As you progress and become a better solver, it will be important to also be able to uh, recognize the order of colors around the cube. So I would want to be able to look at this thusly and say, okay, this is green. That means red is on this side and orange is on this side. Okay, and blue is going to be on the opposite side over here. Uh, and that will be something that we will talk about in a later video. But for now, I really just care that you remember that white and yellow are opposite each other. And the reason this is important is because we are going to solve the cube with yellow on top and with white on bottom. Okay, and this is how most people begin to solve the cube. Now, eventually, as you get better, you're going to want to become color neutral and maybe solve it this way or this way, depending on which is going to give you the fastest solve. But in the beginning of our journey, you're going to start with yellow on the top and white on the bottom. And the reason we do that is because it is consistent. And that way, as we go through these tutorials, you will be able to follow along with the same orientation. Most, if not really all, uh, YouTube tutorials do it the same way. Okay, most teachers teach it the same way with yellow on top and white on bottom. And that way we are all consistent and it just makes it easier to learn. So remember, yellow is on top, white is on bottom. And maybe start to think about the colors around the side, but don't be too worried about memorizing them at this point. The next thing I want you to be aware of are the differences in pieces. And there are three types of pieces on a cube that you need to be thinking about. And we already talked a little bit about center pieces and how they don't move. Okay, they are fixed. The next piece I want you to be aware of are corner pieces. Okay, there are on a cube, there are eight corner pieces and they, each corner piece has three sides. So these corner pieces cannot ever be where an edge piece fits. They can only move wherever corner pieces fit on the corners, okay? And then there are edge pieces. Edge pieces have two colors, and they're only ever going to be where edge pieces fit. They're there, here, here. There's four slots up here, and there's four slots down here where edge pieces fit. So corner pieces can only go where corner pieces fit. Center pieces don't move. Edge pieces, which have two sides, can go wherever edge pieces fit. So as I am making the white cross, what kind of pieces am I using for my white cross? Well, I've got one center piece and four edge pieces. Okay, I don't care about the corner pieces right now. We'll talk about that in the next video lesson. Okay, but for now, we just care about finding the four edge pieces that have white in them and getting them where they belong so that I have the white cross. Okay, and sadly, there is really no trick that I can teach you for getting the white edge pieces 
down here around the white center to create the white cross. It's just something you kind of have to figure out. And remember, we talked about having a growth mindset and about the importance of practice. So at first, this will be daunting. This will be frustrating. You'll be like, it's impossible. But, and then maybe you'll throw your cube, although don't do that. Uh, after time, though, and some practice, you'll be like, oh, wow, this is like soup's easy. And then you won't be crying anymore. You'll dry your eyes and it will all come together for you. Okay. It's just a matter of practice. But I am going to give you some, uh, I don't know, tips to help you. So uh, the first thing is to remember, we're looking for any edge pieces that have white in them, like this one. Okay, this is blue and white. And you can remember that these could be anywhere on the cube where edge pieces fit. So they could be here, like there is one here. It could be here on the side, like that one. And they could be up here on the top, but I don't see any up here. So there's none up here on the top, but they could be. So you can find them in any of those places okay so once you find them you need to decide where they go so this one is blue and white it's going to go right here okay it's going to be between white and blue the white and blue center pieces so how am i going to get this from here where it's flipped the wrong direction to here flip the right direction i mean i could just turn it right but that's not going to do it because it's still flipped the wrong direction so when you find yourself with this kind of a situation, remember, I'm holding yellow at the top, white at the bottom. Okay, and eat, So this is that piece we're talking about, blue and white. An easy way to get it where I need it to flip the orientation is just to turn it up to the side. So I just turn it once, bringing it up to the side, and then turn it down on this side, and that brought it around. All I did was kind of had this, this side pass it off to this side kind of like their trait like it's giving it to it as a gift it's like here merry christmas it turns that piece up okay so this orange centerpiece is gifting it to this blue centerpiece it's turning it up it's like take it from me and the blue takes it and turns it back down and then it is the right direction okay instead if again i cannot just turn the bottom because it's the wrong direction okay i have to turn the side up and then turn the other side back down, and that flips it the right direction, okay? So let's go to this one. So here's my next one. It is the white edge piece with red, and conveniently it's already lined up with red. So all I got to do is turn it down, and now it's where it belongs. And actually, I didn't shuffle this very good because green is where it belongs, and orange is already there. So that gives me the white cross. I've got, and don't worry about this corner piece with white on it. We're ignoring it. Okay, yes, that's white, but it's still a cross. We're just looking at the edge pieces. So I've got the white cross with the uh, edge pieces matching the centerpiece. Blue edge piece, blue centerpiece, red edge piece, red centerpiece, and so on all the way around. Okay, so here's another scenario that you're going to very often find yourself running into. I have the white cross. Hooray for me, I'm amazing. However, sadly, notice that my edge pieces are not in the right order. So I've got uh, green and orange reverse. I think I did red and blue, right? Yes, I did. Okay, but green and orange are reverse. Well, how am I going to fix that? If I rotate the bottom, oh... Amazing. Green's now fixed. But sadly, that destroyed the rest of the cube. Now the other three are all off. Okay. So what am I going to do to reverse these two? Well, it's actually not that hard once it makes sense to you how the cube works. See, notice. The, again, white is the bottom. Yellow is the top, right? So I can turn the top anywhere I want. And does it affect the bottom at all? I mean, no, I'm moving the top and the bottom isn't moving at all, right? Okay, so if I need to move these, I can move them to the top layer, move them wherever the heckins I want, and then that will uh, let me rearrange them without messing up the bottom. Here's what I mean. 
So this green one needs to be moved. So all I have to do is pass it up to the top. So all I did was I turned the front twice, okay? So I'm just passing that piece up to the top. These three are staying on the bottom. The green and white edge piece is now on the top, the yellow layer. And now I can freely move it around wherever I want and the bottom is staying still. So I'm gonna move it, that's not where I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it over the top of green because that's where I, I wanna get it down here to this piece. So I'm just moving it over the top of the green center piece. And now I'm moving it down to the bottom, hooray. And it's in the right place, but notice it kicked the orange one out. Okay, so now I can move the orange one freely wherever I want. So I'm gonna move it over the orange center piece and move it back to the bottom and I have fixed that problem. All right, so in a later video, I'm gonna teach you how to do this a little bit, a wee bit more intuitively. As you get faster, you're going to want to improve how you solve the white cross, but for now, I just want you to worry about solving the white cross. So I want you to practice this until you can do it pretty consistently. And once you have that aha moment and you're like, oh, this makes sense, then go on to the next video slash lesson where I shall teach you how to do the four white corner pieces. Okay. Uh, for now, just practice. And uh, remember, you are capable of doing difficult things and it will come into focus, hooray. Well, hello. Thank you for watching my one take rambling science video where I talk a lot and uh, try to do as few and usually no edits whatsoever. So you hear all my ums and my awkward pauses as I try to collect my thoughts into my head. If you like learning about science, do me a favor. Uh, I have classes that I teach over on outschool.com and you can find out about these classes by going to my website, which is handsome science teacher, because I mean, look at this face, handsome science teacher.com, where you can sign up and get access to not only these videos, because well, you already have access to those, right? They're free but also access to packets that go along with them and live conferences with me, where, we, where I teach you and grade your work and we learn together. I have an entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade science. Uh, also, you are welcome to, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that helps me too, just because it gets my, the word out about me.